What is happening, guys? Cowboy here. Welcome back to the walkthrough, and it's time for another boss. In particular, time to kill the Dark Sun, Gwendolyn. Now, before we proceed, uh, a couple things. Killing Gwendolyn to start will put a permanent sin on you. This isn't the kind of sin you just go and pay the guy and get cleansed. This is a sin because you basically killed uh, the leader of the Blades of the Dark Moon. So by killing him, Blades of the Dark Moon will then be able to invade you. Um, you know, Reds can already invade you. Uh, Gravekeeper guys can invade you. Honestly, it's just going to enable more PvP, and let's be frank here, you want to kill every boss in the game. On top of that, we can get his armor as well as a cool spell, and his soul can make a really cool bow that'll do magic damage or give you a uh, sorcery catalyst that scales off of faith. So, some pretty interesting loot to get out of doing this. Anyway, first thing to do is pop on his ring for just a second. So you just putting that on made that vanish. Uh, as soon as it's vanished, you can go ahead and swap that ring back out for something more useful. In addition to that, I would suggest swapping to something like the Crest Shield here. He does a lot of magic damage, so you're going to want that. Head on down. This is the tomb of the great Lord Gwyn. Tarnished it shall not be by the feet of men. If thou art a true disciple of the Dark Sun, cast aside thine ire. Hear the voice of mine self, Gwyndolin, and kneel before me. O disciple of the Dark Sun, thou hast journeyed far. Hear my voice, if thou shalt swear by the covenant to become a shadow of Father Gwyn and Sister Guinevere, a blade that shall hunt the foes of our lords. Then I shall protect thee, safeguarding thy person with the power of the Dark Moon. Blade of the Dark Moon. So we're really just joining this to gain access to the Covenant. Uh, we now have the Blue Eye Orb, so... Basically, Red Eye Orb, you just invade and punish whoever the hell you want. Blue Eye Orb, you punish sinners. Um, similar to the Forest Covenant, you gotta put that on. Uh, so if you want to level on up this Covenant, obviously don't kill the boss here. That'll kind of change things. But instead, if you don't care about the Covenant and you're on your first playthrough and trying to get everything anyway, traverse that light and beat his ass. Um, since we are right next to a bonfire, could always travel back to Firelink, get that 20 Why Estus real fast. The dark moon trespasseth upon the great lord's tomb. Oh, he's butthurt. Mark the words of mine self, Gwyndolin. Thou shalt not go on Alright, so this fight is technically never ending. Um, basically, as we just chase after him, he will keep teleporting back and casting spells at us. Um, technically, the hallway does end eventually. Um, after about five minutes straight of running, you will reach the end and he can't teleport anywhere. But you can see he'll use his little bow, and you just gotta get up to him and boop him. That's all this fight really involves. Um, you can use the... Oh, no, the wrong one. Um, here we go. You can use the pillars to avoid these ones, the little magic. The big magic you just saw him cast will go straight through the pillars. For that one, the best thing to do is to just roll, or just juke it like that. Well, alternatively, you can go in with a magic shield, or something like Crest or Havels. Honestly, the stuff's not bad to just dodge, though. You can see I'm not having any issue dodging it. If you get hit high behind the pillar, just make sure he's not going to cast the big blue spell, and you're fine. Come here! Oh yeah, got him. Boop. Boop. Oh, there we go. My dodges are too good for you! Ah, I didn't get him there. I mean, it's not a particularly hard fight. I mean, you could kind of say it's like a, a war of attrition here. You know, you just gotta keep bobbing and weaving back and forth and 
Basically, he hopes that you get tired of doing this shit before you kill him. That's really all there is to this, you know, there's no... Big cast? Nope, he's doing arrows. Anytime you take some damage, duck behind a pillar and heal, and then go back out and chase him, you know. Not much to this. Got him. Oh, swathed in dark. An eternal curse upon thee. So if you played Dark Souls 3, this is the thing sticking... Well, not the thing, but this is the guy that's literally being eaten alive by uh, Aldrich. So that's why you see his corpse being... Uh, swung around like a goddamn puppet during the fight. Uh, but anyway, I had to go ahead and defeat him. And then we're gonna head on over this way. Get Sunlight Blade and the Brass Armor. Uh, there's a chest on the left. It is always empty. I'm gonna grab it anyway, just because, you know, people will be like, wait, why? Nothing. Somebody already got here first and took it. Here, grab Sunlight Blade, a really badass miracle. Basically, it's the one that enchants lightning all over your blade. And grab the Brass Set, it's the one that the Firekeeper lady that we killed earlier was wearing. Um, so after this, I'm just going to run down the hallway, uh, and we are going to teleport back. Typically, uh, originally I prepared to do New Londo Ruins, but since that will probably be a double episode on its own, we're actually going to go and tackle the Valley of the Drakes real fast, because that's a rather short area. Uh, it'll be really easy to, you know, just squeeze that in after Gwendolyn, because, let's be honest, this guy doesn't need his own episode. Fucking fight took five minutes. Alright, um, warp back to Firelink. Oh, and also we can now go to the Painted World whenever we want, if you want to go there and farm the Phallix or whatever else. I was thinking back to Priscilla, I wonder if I had opened with a charged heavy attack. If I have this, if I had done this, and then like, Nyom! that might have been able to cut off the tail, but... Oh well, I'm not playing a dex build anyway, it's not a big concern. Um, so we're gonna level up. <laughs> yes, dude! Oh, this is turning into such a nasty build. It's like, what's up, bitch? They call me the pig man. Anyway, um, you might need some arrows. We're going to be killing another zombie dragon, so if you went for arrow cheese, buy some arrows. If you went for magic, use your magic. Come over here, talk to her, and use up that Firekeeper soul that we've been sitting on for God knows how long. I mean, honestly, every time you have a Firekeeper soul, you should be going there and using it. I'm just absolutely terrible about doing it. I constantly forget. I'll play like half the game with a plus one Estus and be like, oh shit, I should be a plus three right now. So we're going to do the double elevator just like we would if we were heading over to Blight Town. Yeah. That's right, no, it's not a double elevator, it's just a regular. So anyway, here we are, Valley of the Drakes, hooray! Um, oh, that's right, that's why I moved it until after the... Damn it. Alright, um, so anyway, it's not going to be here right now. I'm just going to show you guys where it is. If you're a caster, you'll want to do this. Uh, after the next boss, if you come over here, right here you will find Beatrice's gear. Remember the caster that we summoned to help us fight the uh, Moonlight Butterfly? Well, you can summon her again for the Four Kings. We're not going to because she'll make the fight harder than it needs to be, but after you've completed that fight, her gear can be found right there. So come on down and grab it. Obviously, it's a short run uh, from Firelink, so it's not like it's a hard thing to get. But anyway, we are going to cross the bridge and head left. I was wondering why I moved Valley of Drakes until uh, after New Londo, and that, that would explain it. Take this bridge, and you can see our zombie dragon just waiting up ahead. Um, so as we don't have a uh, leveled up bow, we're going to kill this guy the old-fashioned way. I should really go ahead and level up my bow. You shouldn't wake up until you start grabbing the items, so take that opportunity to get in a big hit on him's ass. 
just like the last zombie dragon, um, the same threats, you know. Heavy attacks can knock you off. You can do that, you know. It's, it's just a pain in the ass to fight these things, to be honest. And that's why so many people just end up cheesing them with, uh, with fire arrows. They... You know, they hit hard. Um, you know, right there, I basically just got, like, knocked down and couldn't get back up. So there's, you know, it's, it's kind of tricky, uh, basically finding a, a good window in which you can stay and attack him. Now, of course, you can play the, like, uh, jump rope game, where it's, you know, you're, like, waiting to go in, you're waiting to go in, you're waiting to go in, and you go in, and then you hop out real fast, but ain't nobody got time for that. But going past him, um, we're going to get the Astora Straight Sword, pretty decent weapon, the Dragon Crest, which is a anti-fire shield, and a soul item. Obviously, we don't need any of that stuff. Um, the Black Knight Great Shield already boasting 95 freaking resistance to fire. You know, we're not worried about fire resist, but regardless, it's something that's in the game, and hence, it's something that we're going to accomplish. Frankly, you know, it's not a far run back. Now the one downside is because we've already attacked him and pissed him off, now he's awake. He's not just napping on the side of the cliff anymore, so we don't get a, uh, a free big old whammy to the face this time. Uh, so we're gonna go on in. Uh, Get my souls. Oh god, you're such a dick. God damn you on that dragon. That bow at I really need to just upgrade this stupid fucking thing to like plus fifteen. At the end of the day, arrows can only do so much. There's no way I'm doing this. That'll take god damn no, that'll take too long. Alright. Let's find a good window here. Poison's gonna stop there, it looks like. See? Like, even there, man, I was blocking. It still boinked on me. As well as the soul of a proud knight. Alright, so now we're gonna run ahead, and these are the dragon smurly. Remember when we came down here and I was showing you guys that dragon, and I was like, yeah, you can farm these guys for about a thousand souls a pop, and I was trying to make him fall off the cliff, and instead he killed me like the asshole that he is? Well, now it's payback time. Such a nice feeling in Dark Souls when it's like, you know, you leveled up, you come back, and the shit that previously, like, dookied all over you, you just, you just annihilate it. Not even a chance, you just straight molest it. Just pulling that one over to say hi. You're gonna have to stop doing that shit. Alright, 
They're not usually this annoying. This one I'm killing because he just won't stop flying. Oh my god. Oh my god. And then he kills himself. See, this is why I have absolutely no respect for the dragons. Did you guys see that? He just literally flew to his death. Explain to me the logic behind that. There is none. There is no logic. Anyway, grab the brigand armor and the spider shield. These ones you can just walk past. Uh, this gate is going to be open until later. We will get the key to unlock that. That's what we use to unflood New Londo. But the mechanism for that is inside. Instead, just run past these dicks. It's honestly not worth the hassle. Climb on up this thing, grab the red tear stone ring, and then we're going to be heading on out of this place via the homeward bone. So, with that all done, it's now time to head to the New Londo Ruins. Um, so, before we go, might as well use up anything you got. Level up. I'm gonna fight another very hard boss. So, when I think of the hardest bosses in the first Dark Souls, uh, Orange Seen and Snow are certainly one of them. Uh, following up on that, I would say that Manus is another really big contender for including DLC. Um, and then the boss we're about to go fight, the Four Kings. Four Kings, and I mean, they're not that bad with the right build, but they can be absolute hell to fight. And so, if you don't really know what you're doing, you're going to get Dookie done. I'm not interested in any of the things from Gwendolyn, hence that's why I'm... Uh, soul, along with Priscilla's as well. You know, I don't need the scythe. I don't need his catalyst. This is this is basically a pure melee build. I don't need no dark mode, though. One of the benefits of just doing a pure big dick melee build, you just eat like everything. Everything becomes a meal to boost that endurance up to 40. You have a maximum equip load and you're unstoppable. Um... Bone, take that off. I don't think I have any yet, but I get some on my way down there. So leave an open slot. You're going to need one. Uh, but anyway, from here, it's time to go to the new Londo ruins. So head on down. Having rested, you should have the 20 Estus flasks. Um, I don't think there's any invasions here. I'm checking. No, there are none. Uh, we can summon Beatrice, but we're not going to anyway. As I mentioned, she'll just make the fight harder. So whether or not you're human doesn't matter for where we're going. I like this like weird blue glow that they added with the lighting. Alright, so we've been to this place a couple times, but we've never actually tackled it. Not going to right now either, because we're going to wrap this episode up. But in the next episode, we'll be making our way through the entirety of New Londo Ruins. Uh, some main things of interest here are we're going to grab the ember that will allow us to upgrade our weapons up even higher. Um, on top of that, we'll also gain access to a bunch of chunks we'll use those to upgrade with and uh yeah looking good so anyway stay tuned catch you guys for the next part